Hello and uh, welcome to this lecture. Uh, this lecture is a very critical and important lecture in terms of uh, setting up this complex exponential. The complex exponential plays a huge role in electrical engineering applications, not just in electrical engineering. In fact, you know, across all branches of science and engineering, this complex exponential will show up again and again and again. As Euler's formula is a very famous formula in, in this area. So all that we studied about sinusoidal functions and complex numbers sort of come together and we'll use the exponential function and define this complex exponential. I'll urge you to understand this very well uh, because this plays a huge part in uh, electronics and electrical engineering. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so how to define e power z for z equals x plus y y. So that I'm going to start with that question. Uh, we know how to define e power x for real numbers, right? e power x is defined through this uh, series for real numbers, 1 plus x plus x squared by 2 factor and so on. When you have x plus i y, how do I extend it to e power z, okay? Now, one of the properties of real x is that uh, first of all, it converges for all x, that's okay, we know that. This multiplicative property is crucial, right? e power x plus y is e power x into e power y. Here also, there is a plus. So, this provides some sort of a natural way to define uh, the complex for complex z equals x plus i y e power z. If at all we manage to define it for complex, it should work for x, it should work for i, I y. So clearly e power z should factor as e power x into e power i y, right? So this should happen, right? But this property is very crucial. So that's some property we'll retain and we can define like this, okay? So this is the starting point. I know what to do with e power x. What do I do with e power i y, right? So i y is an imaginary number, right? How do I define e power i y? For imaginary number, I make the most, you know, uh, natural definition. What do you do for e power i y? We are going to simply use the same expansion, right? e power x, we have this expansion. Instead of x, I will replace with i y, okay? This seems like the most straightforward thing to do. So you have 1 plus i y plus i y squared divided by 2 factorial plus i y cubed by 3 factorial so on, okay? Now this needs some care, right? First of all, on the right hand side, you have a series, you have a power series involving a variable y and these numbers are complex, okay? So on the right hand side, you have a complex series, okay? I need to develop a theory for complex sequences, complex series, complex power series and then define e power i y properly like this, right? I'm going to skip that. We did that in detail in the real case, okay? For the complex case, I'm going to skip saying that it's largely the same, okay? You can make this very rigorous by, you know, defining sequence of complex numbers. Now, sequence of complex numbers, it's going to have a sequence of real parts, sequence of imaginary parts. As long as both these parts converge, the complex number also converges, right? So, it's a very easy definition and uh, you can also use the absolute value of the complex number to define the convergence if you like. So, there's easy ways to build up this theory of complex uh, number sequences, series involving complex numbers, power series involving complex numbers and their convergence, okay? But we're going to skip that. I don't want to repeat that same thing again, it will sound very repetitive, but I think most people find this definition very convenient and comforting, okay? So you have e power x for real x, instead of x I put i y, okay? So I get this complex number. So remember the critical, critical thing is, while e power x is real, e power i y is going to become a complex number, okay? So I'll show you what happens when I do this, you'll see clearly it will be a complex number. So once you have this complex number in place, I can do e power x into that complex number I will get e power z as a complex number, okay? So I hope you understand that. When z is complex, e power z is being defined as a complex number in this fashion, okay? I hope this definition is uh, clear and uh, comfortable to you. In fact, this is the same, you know, instead of x plus i y, instead of putting i y alone, you can put x, y, x plus i y instead of x here. You will get the same answer. We have, we have seen that before, no? That's the multiplicative property of uh, e power function. And that proof also goes through. So, so you can see that this one uh, works very, very cleanly in the exactly analogous manner, okay? All right, so here comes Euler's formula, okay? This is a very, very uh, amazingly wonderful formula. It says e power i theta is cos theta plus i sin theta, right? In the previous thing, we were looking at e power i y. Instead of y, I'm using theta because, you know, I know cos theta, sin theta are coming. So I'm just using theta there, e power i theta is cos theta plus i sin theta. There's a very simple proof for this. e power i theta is this formula, right? 1 plus i theta plus i theta squared by 2 factorial. I just have to write it carefully, right? I'm going to group all the even powers together 
and group all the odd powers together. Okay. So now what is i squared? Right. Let me show you. i squared is minus 1. i power 4 is plus 1. Okay. How did I get i squared is minus 1? That's the definition of i itself. Right. i power 4 is 1. i power 6 is minus 1 again. Because right. Why i power 4 becomes 1. Then you have an i square left that is minus 1. So when you go i squared, i power 4, i power 6, etc., you are going to go minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1, etc. Okay. So that is this sequence. So that is what you get here. Okay. What about uh, the odd powers? Right. i is i itself. i power 3 is minus i. Right. i power 3 is i square into i. That is minus i. Then i power 5 is plus i. i power 7 is minus i. So the odd terms are going to oscillate between i and minus i. i minus i, i minus i, so on. So in all this i minus i's, I can pull the i out. And this here also, all these i square, i power 4 will go away. They will become minus plus, And I get this very, very simple looking uh, formula, which, you know, I can recall from my sine and cos theta expansion that this is 1 minus theta squared by 2 factorial plus theta power 4 by 4 factorial minus plus so on plus i into theta minus theta power 3 by 3 factorial plus theta power 5 by 5 factorial minus plus so on. Okay. So now this guy is clearly cos theta and this guy is clearly sine theta. So you get cos theta plus i sine theta. Okay. So there you go. The sinusoidals and the exponentials and the complex numbers have come together and have given you this wonderful and simple formula. Notice that i square is minus 1 was very critical here. The power of previous expansion of cos theta was very critical here. So this gives you that nice connection between sinusoidal functions and the complex exponential. It's very, very, very critical formula and very, very useful and important. So e power z for a complex number is very easy to define. You define it as e power x plus i y. You have e power x times cos y plus i sin y. That's it. Okay, as simple as that. I just want to give you one warning. Uh, in electrical engineering, it's common to use j instead of i uh, for square root of minus 1. Uh, I'm, I'm going to use i because that's much more common. Uh, but uh, be aware of this uh, distinction. People use j. You can use any other letter, right? As long as you know it's root of minus 1, it's good enough. Okay. So you see e power x plus i y has this very, very simple formula e power x into cos y plus i sin y. Okay. Okay. So that's Euler's formula. So let me. Uh, just dwell on this a little bit more and connect it to the complex plane. Okay, so the complex plane is quite important. This is the unit circle in the two-dimensional plane, a uh, circle of radius 1. If you have an angle theta coming in from here, uh, then that's uh, going to be the point cos theta comma sin theta. Right, so that's just the definition uh, for, for cos theta sin theta. So the unit circle is basically set of all cos theta comma sin theta such that theta lies between 0 to 2 pi. So that will give you this circle. Now uh, move ahead to the complex plane. In the complex plane, uh, again, we have this point, but instead of calling it cos theta comma sin theta, we're going to write it as a complex number cos theta plus i sin theta. And the unit circle, right, is a set of all complex numbers with absolute value equal to 1 is the same as e power i theta. e power i theta is 0 to, for theta ranging from 0 to 2 pi, gives you all these points in the straight line, which means in the circle, I'm sorry, and all those points are exactly those points which have absolute value 1 on the complex plane. Okay. So that's e power i theta for you and the connection to the unit circle becomes very, very clear. So e power i theta is the unit circle. Okay. So that's the nice thing to know about this. Another easy thing to see is conjugation. What happens when I conjugate e power i theta? I get cos theta minus i sin theta, which is the same as e power minus i sin theta. Okay. I hope you see this. Maybe I should write out this a little bit more in detail. See, if I have to do e power minus i theta, that is the same as cos of minus theta plus i sine of minus theta. Now, I know my symmetric conditions, cos of minus theta is theta, uh, sine of minus theta is minus i sine theta. Okay, so this is e power minus i theta and this is the same as conjugate of this guy, right? And what is that? That is e power i theta conjugate. Okay. I hope you see this. This uh, I didn't go into this great detail in the slide, but this is the exact same thing that's been written here. So what is the conjugate of e power i theta? e power minus i theta. So what is the absolute value of e power i theta? Has to be 1, we know that, but you can write it as e power i theta times its conjugate, right? Absolute value squared, right? So that would be e power i theta times e power minus i theta, that becomes 1. So all of these things are, you know, coming together in a very simple and nice way. And uh, quite often, quite often, it is very advantageous to think of trigonometric functions as real part 
an imaginary part of e power i theta, right? Cos theta is real part of e power i theta, sin theta is imaginary part of e power i theta, okay? So the complex exponential in many cases is much easier to deal with than cos theta sin theta. But even in e power i theta, the periodicity is clear, right? So you start from 0, you go up to 2 pi, and then after that it's periodic. And sin and cos are just the real and imaginary part of this e power i theta. Okay, specific angles of interest, this is again uh, something we have to see, we have seen it before, right? This theta, as it goes along the unit circle, it hits some specific points which show up again and again and what is uh, the description there? Uh, e power i0 is 1, right? We have seen that before, the in terms of complex numbers, e power i pi by 4 is 1 plus i by root 2, right? Cos, cos pi by 4 is 1 by root 2, sin pi by 4 is 1 by root 2, so you get 1 plus i by root 2. So, once you know 1 plus i by root 2, I can easily do i3 by pi 4, 5 pi by 4, 7 pi by 4, I mean, it's just the same thing. So, you see, you have minus 1 plus i by root 2, minus 1 minus i by root 2, 1 minus i by root 2, all possible combinations come about there. Another very, very nice property is e power i pi by 2 is i, okay. So, this i is the, you know, imaginary number and, and i is associated with uh, some sort of a rotation by pi by 2, it's associated with pi by 2 in a basic way. I'll, I'll talk about this rotation shortly enough, but this i is associated with pi by 2, okay, e power i pi by 2 is i, okay. Now once I know that, I, I know e power i 3 pi by 2 is minus i, right, i into i into i, right, e power i into 3 pi by 2 is actually e power i pi by 2 whole cubed, right. Same thing, you know, e power i pi by 4 whole cubed, e, i pi by 4 whole cubed, will be e power i 3 pi by 4. You can cube this and check that this will be correct, okay. All of these things you can do. All these properties of e will help you in dealing with these computations very, very easily, okay. Now, a very, very nice property here is e power i pi equals minus 1, right. e power i pi is minus 1. So, a lot of people consider this formula to be a very beautiful formula. It's a thing of beauty. You can see why that is true. A lot of people I've, I've seen in many places, people frame this formula, e power i pi is minus 1, right? If you think of e, e is some 2.718 something. If you think of pi, pi is some 3.14 something. e comes from various different sequences and series and wonderful, uh, you know, 1 plus 1, 1 plus 1 plus 1 by 2 factorial plus 1 by 3 factorial, so on. Pi comes from many series also. It also comes as the ratio of perimeter to diameter. And i is what? i is this imaginary number root of minus 1. And wonderfully enough, if you do e power i pi, you're going to get minus 1. Minus 1 is something that we know quite well. And uh, this uh, crazy numbers like e and pi and i are combining in a very nice way to give you minus 1. So, so this is considered one of the most uh, beautiful, simple, elegant results in mathematics. And it's nice that we're able to see it in this course as well. Anyway, so I think the important point is e power i theta corresponds to points on the circle and there are various interesting points and you can compute them and you can you can see the connections between them also. I hope you see that, that when you raise one thing to another power, you get another point and so on, right? For instance, e power i, I 3 pi by 2, if you square it, you're going to get minus i, okay? You can check that. These things seem very uh, different and counterintuitive, but they will all be true. Okay, because this i square equals minus 1 is like a very powerful and simple limiting form. Okay, so that's about specific angles of interest. Let's move on and look at multiplication by e power i theta. Okay, so this is an important thing. If you remember long ago when I introduced the complex plane, I said addition is easy to visualize on the plane. Multiplication by a real number is easy to visualize on the plane. What about multiplication by a complex number? Okay, we'll start by multiplying with e power i theta. And uh, this, uh, I will tell you, has the meaning of a rotation. Why is that true? Let's start with a plus ib, okay, a plus ib in rectangular coordinates, maybe it is r e power i phi, this notation is phi in uh, Greek, uh, Greek notation, yeah, e power i phi. Uh, so this means that the radius, that the magnitude is r for a plus ib, right, ab, and this angle is phi, okay. I'm going to now multiply this with e power i theta. So when I multiply a plus ib with e power i theta, it's the same as multiplying r e power i phi, okay, okay, I hope you, I hope you see, okay, so maybe I should spend a little bit of time on how I got r e power i phi, okay, I hope this is, this you see very easily, see a plus i b is r comma phi, r comma phi in polar, okay, 
what does that mean? That means A equals R cos theta, B equals R sin theta, okay. So, A plus I B is R cos theta plus I into R sin theta, you can pull the R out and you get what? R into cos theta plus I sin I am sorry, I think I have been writing C here and I wrote theta there, I apologize. Phi phi e power i phi, okay. So, so here is this very nice and interesting thing. Instead of saying a plus i b is r phi in polar, we will commonly write it as a plus i b equals r e power i phi, okay. So, it is also quite important. So, my polar coordinate notation becomes this r e power i phi, okay. And do you see that? I mean, I hope you can see that this is a very important connection between this complex exponential and polar coordinate representation. So, a plus i b simply becomes r e power i phi. So, that is what I have written here, okay. a plus i b in polar coordinates is r e power i phi. Now, instead of multiplying a plus i b with e power i theta, I mean, I mean it is exactly the same as multiplying r e power i phi into i theta. So, you notice how multiplication becomes simpler when you go to polar coordinates, right. So, now instead of doing any multiplication, I am just adding the angles r e power i phi plus theta. Now, where is r e power i phi plus theta? in the complex plane, you can go back and look at it. I have I have phi here, I have the same radius r, but I have a different angle phi plus theta. So, on top of this line, I have to rotate again and go to r, the same r, but by an angle theta. So, this would be r e power i phi plus theta, right. So, this is what I meant by saying multiplication by e power i theta is rotation by theta. So, anti-clockwise rotation by theta, okay. I hope you see that, it is very simple to see. So, multiplication by e power i theta is rotation by theta. So, in particular, multiplication by i is rotation, anti-clockwise rotation by 90 degrees. Multiplication by minus 1 is rotation by 180 degrees. Multiplication by minus i is rotation by 3 pi by 2 and so on, okay. One multiplication by 1 plus i is sort of 1 plus i by root 2 is a rotation by pi by 4, okay. So, anything on e power i theta multiplication is a rotation by, is a rotation first of all, how much it is a rotation by? It is a rotation by that angle theta in the polar coordinates, okay. It is a very nice uh, thing to see, okay. Now, what about a general multiplication? If you have c plus i d instead of e power i theta, I know in polar coordinates I can always write it as s e power i theta. So, if I have a plus i b which is r e power i phi, I multiply it by c plus i d which is s e power i theta all I get is r times s e power i phi plus theta. So, you notice here two things change, the magnitude changes, it gets multiplied by the magnitude here and the angle simply gets added, okay. So, this is what happens. So, how do you visualize that? There is r s now, assuming s is greater than 1, so you, you can plot this r s as something bigger than r, but the angle remains the same, theta, okay. So, this is our visualization for multiplication by complex numbers. You move to polar coordinates, you see r phi, if you multiply by s theta, you simply multiply the magnitude by s and you rotate by theta, okay. So, it is a very, very easy thing to see. So, multiplication by s e power i theta, scaling of magnitude by s and of anti-clockwise rotation by theta, okay. Of course, if you have minus theta, it will be a clockwise rotation by theta, all right. So, that is the way in which uh, for uh, like theta is negative, then it will go clockwise rotation, okay. So, finally, we have figured out multiplication, okay. So, now I am going to just not do these problems, just talk to you. Once you have e power i pi by 4, you can do all these calculations, simplify, you know, play with this, see the sequences, what happens to these things, etc., etc. So, these are easy things to do. Hope you have seen this before, okay. So, that concludes this lecture and it was, like I said, an all-important lecture which introduced the complex and exponential, which is one of the fundamental, fundamental uh, requirements for uh, in electrical engineering, you have to understand the complex exponential and its connection to the trigonometric functions. So, sine and cos appear all the time in engineering and science and electrical engineering in particular. And so, complex exponential is a very, very important connecting point and an easy thing to work with, okay. Thank you very much.